Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to welcome author Misha Archer. Please post any questions you have for her in the chat, and we will get to them at the end of the program. Misha Archer is an author, artist, and illustrator working in inks and collage. Her multi-layered pieces are created with origami papers, tissue papers, and pattern papers she makes with homemade stamps and whatever she can find that works. She taught in a kindergarten classroom for 15 years where books were her favorite teaching tool. She worked as a carpenter for another 15 years, and now finally she spends her time doing what she loves best, writing and illustrating books for children. Welcome, Misha, it's good to see you. I'll turn Thank it over you. and uh, come back to you after your presentation for questions. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to my studio. Um, I'm here to read my latest book that I wrote and illustrated called Wonder Walkers. And we're gonna put it on the screen so you can all see it. So here we go. Wonder Walkers. Wonder Walkers. <laughs> Wonder Walkers. And here's our, our two kids. Wonder Walk? Sure. Is the sun the world's light bulb? Is fog the river's blanket? Do mountains have bones? Are forests the mountain's fur? I wonder, me too. Are trees the sky's legs? Are branches trees arms? Is dirt the world's skin? Are roots the plant's toes? Do caves have mouths? Are shells the shore's necklace? Is the ocean the world's bath? Are rivers the earth's veins? Is the wind the world's breathing? Is rain the day's tears? Is the moon the world's nightlight? I wonder. Me too. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I did the pictures and how I wrote the words and how I got the ideas. So what I'm gonna do is turn my camera around so that you can see where I am. First of all, I'm in my studio. And then up here, I put all kinds of things to talk about the book. So when I write a book, I make a dummy. And a dummy is just a little version of the book. So I do all these little sketches and these are just done with magic marker and they're actually this size, these are tiny. And I know that when I make something little that it's gonna work big. So if there's kids at the very back of the classroom, they'll be able to tell what the picture is because it worked as a little tiny picture. So it's gonna work big. So these are just very quick little drawings in each one. So they, these are also what I showed to the editor and the art director and they, that made them decide that they wanted to make this into a book. 
And you can see that things changed too. And then over here, I can move, try not to move too fast so I don't make you dizzy. So here's the words. And when I wrote these words, they were actually words that I collected over a long time. I carry around a little notebook in my pocket. And when I get ideas, I put them down in the notebook. And if you look at this one right here, do mountains have bones? This is something my daughter, when she was three, and she's a grown 35 year old woman now, but when she was three, we were looking at the mountains and she said, and we thought they looked like bears sleeping. And she said, do mountains have bones? And I just thought that was such a wonderful way to, to realize that you, we're all kind of part of the earth. And we all, we think that the earth is kind of like a big person. And I think that's a good way to think about the world so that we'll take care of it better. And another one, this one, do caves have mouth? Once I was walking with my niece who was two and I said, why don't we go and have lunch in the mouth of the cave? And she looked up at me kind of worried and said, do caves have mouths? So this was gathered over many, many years, this book. And I think it came together because of the title, because Wonder Walkers seemed to be a thing that everyone would understand. Let's go for a wonder walk. So some of the ideas that I had, we didn't use like this one. Do ferns whisper? And another one we didn't use was, do trees take steps? And another one was, did birds invent music? So sometimes I think maybe I will write another one sometime so we could have a wonder walk or two. Now, if we go over here, you can see some of the sketches that I did. And you can see I was doing a lot of ones trying to figure out how I wanted the kids to look in the windows and what the, who the characters were and how they look in different ways they tilt their heads. And then here, these are tiny little drawings of how I was wondering about what the cover would look like. So I make lots and lots of sketches. I have sketchbooks as full of little drawings like this, but this gives you an idea. Sometimes they color them in. And then when I make my papers, and I'll take you over here. When I make my papers, and here's some of my papers, I make all kinds of papers. For days and days, I just create papers. This one is made with credit card, just dipped in paint and made lots of little marks. This is with a fun brush that I'll show you later. These are stamp. This is made with a stamp of a snowflake that I made. This is using some fun brushes. This one is just taking a stamp pad that I had already used and just using it as a stamp itself. More fun brushes. So my papers, I just create them and then I think of what to do with them because like for example, this one looks to me like it would make great bark for a tree. And here I use some stamps that I made. And here's some that is just taking paint and putting it on wax paper and then just laying the paper onto the wax paper. And it, you can do many layers of color that way. Here's another one that has both stamping and then using a side of a credit card. And then over here, here's one. This is a really simple, fun thing to do. You take peeled crayons and then you just put, you know, this is for 
wrapping fruit, like for a fruit bag at the grocery store. And you just take paper and you put it over it and then you use the side of your crayon and you make these great patterns. And then you can even paint over the crayon and it it's resists. So it's a great, easy project to do. When I make my stamp pads, I just use packing material like this. And I just spread with it, actually using a credit card. I love using credit cards for spreading glue and paint. I also use these nice stamp pads that are um, all different great colors. And here are some of the stamps that I make. And these are blocks of wood that have inner tube. This is bicycle inner tube cut up and glued on. And they make uh, great. And that, anything that I can find, I, I put on blocks of wood and see if it works as a stamp. This one right here is just cutting some uh, cardboard thin and then just rolling it up and gluing it on. I just sometimes I just take rubber bands and glue them on and they make fun patterns. I love using these zigzaggy scissors for all kinds of things. There's my credit cards for spreading, spreading paint and glue. Here's some of the brushes that I like to use with all kinds of fun tips. And then I use stamp, I mean, uh, punches. This one punches all kinds of shapes, little circles, and this one does a big circle. I love using origami paper and tissue paper. And it's just great fun to make paper. And then, then you just get ideas from them. Like this, this would make a great sunset, wouldn't it? And that's just taking paper, taking wax paper painting on it and then laying your piece of paper onto the wax, onto the wax paper yet. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull back a little bit and show you a few of the books that I've done. And each one of these books I, I use, I do collage, but I also, when I get to the faces, I like to use paint to get the details because Faces need to have a little more sort of softness and, and collage makes it a little bit harder to do that. So. And, and I just did another book for Patricia McLaughlin. And I just delivered the art yesterday. It's like taking a baby, my baby, to New York and giving it over to someone else. <laughs> it's hard. Um, and these are the two books that I wrote, Jan Daniel's Good Day and Daniel Finds a Poem. And here you'll see the little dummy, the first dummy that got me the job. And look at the name, it's a different name. Daniel Finds a Poem, Daniel Hears a Poem. And so working with an editor is a lot of fun because you're working with someone who loves books as much as you do and really has wonderful ideas. And I, I really like working with this editor who I did Wonder Walkers with because she really believes in my ideas and it's very important. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and then let's see how we're doing on time. Pretty good, let's do... Um, a little demonstration of my collage. So I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna clamp it on so I don't knock it off like I did before. And then I'm gonna pull, I wish I could see you as an audience because it feels like I'm talking to nobody, but I know you're out there. So I'm going to create something for you guys. I like to do and you can guess what it is as I'm going. So sometimes when I'm using paper, I'm gonna take this paper because I think it looks like a great kind of bark. And this time I'm just pairing it because I like the rough edge that it gives me. So this is going to be 
of more actions put it right here. And I'm just using a glue stick this time, but normally I use this really nice librarian's glue because that's what they fix the books with and it's really nice glue to use. So just, I'm just tearing it. And it's a great thing to do when you're little and you're not sure how to use scissors yet. Tearing is a great way to do things. You can do a lot with just tearing paper and you can get great textures. I have a branch that goes up here. And I can show you a few great tricks when you do, when you wanna make more of one something. So I'm gonna make some leaves. My paper like that, and then I was going to cut it, fold it in half, and then fold it again. And now I'm going to cut a leaf shape. So I folded it two times. Guess how many leaves I'm going to get? So here's one leaf. Here's Two of these. Here's three leaves. And here's four leaves. And that was easy. I didn't have to cut out four leaves. I could just fold it and then cut it like that. And another cool thing is, is this piece here. A little bit first. I'm going to fold this in half. And this is kind of like when you do Valentine's. When you cut something on the fold, it'll be the same on both sides. So here I'm going to make a shape. Maybe like this. I wonder if you're starting to guess what I'm going to be making. Very colorful. Let's see, what should I do to this part of Maybe I'll use this. So this was done with this cool brush like that, or maybe it was this one. I'm using inks. So now I want to do two of these. So I folded my paper in half. And now I'm going to cut a kind of like a leaf again. So I have two of them. Right. Mm, interesting. Are you guessing what this is going to be? Now, let's see. I can try this. Again. I'm going to do a different shape. It's kind of a point up here, and now when I open it up, hmm, I bet you can guess what it is now. <laughs> it's a funny one. Now, if I wanted to change that, and make it, that's, this is what's great about collage. If I felt like I wanted to change something about it, I can just add on to it. Like I'm thinking maybe I want the cheek to come out a little more like that. So I just took that like a Band-Aid. I just put it right on. So I want the same shape again. So I just lay it on there. Put it. So collage is very forgiving. It lets you do all kinds of tricks. I'm gonna do that. I think it should go 
a little bit better. And then, <laughs> so then I'm going to use this great thing. This is a hole puncher that makes a huge punch. Punch that hole. So I'm going to punch, punch, and I've got some eyes. Kind of looks like a cat. Maybe it's a cat owl. And then I think I want to do a beak. I use this. This part. And if you look closely at this one, see those little flowers on there? I actually used a poppy. You know, like the flower, the poppy. After it loses its petals, you can use it as a stamp. So I'm going to. Now here I have it. I have it folded and I'm just going to cut right on the fold here. Let's see how this comes out. That's kind of a good little nose. There. And then I could just use a marker to make the eyeballs. And up. Oh. Just floating there. So I need to maybe I'll use this. I need to make some feet. I'll make some yellow feet. So I'll fold it. And I'll cut some little legs. And I can slip them right under. So they come out from behind. And then I'll put some toes so they can hold on to the branch. So maybe I'll fold it twice. And I learned from someone who works with owls that they have two toes in front and two toes in back. So just we're just going to see the two toes in front and this one. One, two, one, two, and there we go. So there's our little owl. He's kind of cute. And I could keep adding more leaves. I could put flowers in the tree. I could put some clouds in the background like at sunset. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll tear them. So what's so great is that when you make a lot of different paper, you just get ideas from your paper. Like it looks like it's gonna be nice little sunsetty cloud. Uh, I could make a little friend on the branch next to it. Like how about this one? Little bird thing next to him. Yeah, I could go on forever doing this. And maybe I'll just make a beak that goes out to the side. So I hope, I hope this gives you guys ideas for things to do, different ways to make paper. Now he has a friend, and I could just peel this back, or maybe I know what I can do, and just rip a little bit more so he's, you know, I guess he's from behind, that's fine, like that, and they're friends. So there we are, and 
now if you guys have questions about anything that I work with, that I write, how I write, how I draw, I would love to hear your questions. I'm going to push this back so you can see things to remind you of things I was talking about. So fabulous. So we heard that you use credit cards and poppies. What other kinds of uh, um, unusual things have you used as stamps? Um, lots of different flowers, actually. Flowers are great because the middle of the flower makes these great patterns. Um, so many things, anything I can find. Um, sometimes I just use my fingers and I make a whole page of fingerprints. Um, let's see. Like sponges, sometimes I use sponges, they make a great pattern. Sometimes I just take the, the actual um, stamp pad and I use that. That makes a beautiful soft pattern. You can do different colors over each other. I just discover things. Sometimes I use things like this, you know, things that, like this um, netting. I can, I just put it on the stamp pad and then I put that on. I, I make a big mess is what I usually do. Just seeing what works. <laughs> so. What kind of paint do you use? Um, for this last book, I used inks. So they're, they're nice. They come in, I'll show you. They come, they come in this nice little jar and you can just use little drops at a time, but that's usually when I'm painting the faces and things. If I'm using, for the, for the uh, stamp pads, I use acrylics. And then when I make, when I paint on the wax paper, I just use, I can use watercolor or you can just water down your acrylics. And then, so you paint on the wax paper and it, it sort of bubbles up and then you lay down a piece of paper on it and quickly take it off and it makes these great patterns. And I saw that the papers are colored sometimes ahead of time. Is that just cardstock or paper or what kind of paper? It's, it's, um, it's just copy paper. Like you can go to the copy place and, and ask them if you can just have a little bit of each of their colors and they're usually fine with it. Yeah, great. I think that would be an awesome thing to try at home. Yeah, no, it's fun. It's, and, it, and it's very forgiving when you don't know how to cut, you can rip and when you make a little mistake, you just take another piece of paper and you put it over it. So it's, it's easy. <laughs> what is your favorite place to wonder walk? Um, on my mountain that's right behind me, from right from our back door, we can walk up onto a mountain named Toby. And Toby is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> because I've lived, I've actually, when I was seven years old, I used to come to a camp that was right on the same property. So even back then, I was learning about this mountain. And now we don't even go on the paths. We just go off into the woods and, and wonder. <laughs> I nice. thought your studio has a really beautiful view out the windows too. <laughs> it does. It's all woods around us. Yeah. We built this house. It's our, yeah, I can show you. So I used to be a carpenter with my husband and, and we built our house so I can oh, show you a little wow. bit. So it's right in my studios, right in the house, which is a um, very convenient because I can go off and start a soup or something and then come and work for a little while and then go back and check on it. So it's nice, but I also get interrupted a lot, which is sometimes frustrating. <laughs> so. um, and I saw, I loved the way that you talked about how you accumulated Wonder Walkers, because um, it sounds like it was something that started a long time ago and you've been sort of holding on to them. Um, it was that sort of the same for the Daniel books? Or did they? Um, the, no, the Daniel book was a very interesting because um, I was very interested in getting a new agent. And I, and I met this agent at a conference. And so I emailed him my website and said, I really would love to have you as an agent. He looked at my pictures and he sent me back one of my own pictures and said, what's the story about this little boy on the stage? 
And I said, um, there's no story, but there will be. <laughs> and so I just went home and I just crammed. Like it was like I had an exam or something. I said, I know I need to impress this wonderful agent. And I did a lot of just thinking back to what worked when I was teaching kindergarten. I looked at all my mother's, my mother was a preschool teacher. I looked at all of her notes and like what were her favorite, you know, rhymes to do with the kids and, you know, all these projects. And, and it just started to gel that I needed to have a story that had a lot of different angles to it because there's poetry and there's habitats and there's um, days of the week and times of the day. So I was just thinking about what teachers would love and what kids would like and, and, a, and a theme that would take you through to this little boy who was presenting at the end. So that was how I did it. And I, and I got him as an agent and he immediately got me this book, which was amazing. He knew just who to send it to. So it was the rest is history. <laughs> Wonderful. So. Does it feel different to illustrate to make illustrations for books that you didn't write? Yes, it's great. I mean, it's great to illustrate my own because I can change the words if I need to or drop words, which is interesting. Doing Wonder Walkers, I really loved that I had so few words. I, I think I'm working towards a wordless book because this one really only has. I think 84 words or something. I really love the less, the less is more idea. And especially since I think kids fill in when there's not words, they fill in with their own imaginations and thoughts. So um, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <Forget that. laughs> what does it feel like to illustrate when um, you didn't write the word? Right, and so when I'm illustrating for someone else, well, someone who's really good, like Patricia McLaughlin was easy to illustrate for because she almost like does page breaks in her text, you know, like she has a real feeling of how a book flows. So she was easy. And I'm actually the one who decides, you know, where to break the words, which is interesting. It's a, it's, it's a big responsibility. Um, but so, I like it. There's a certain freedom to it too, because I'm, then I have like um, a contained idea of somebody else. I don't have too, you know, when I'm doing my own, it almost seems like there's too many ideas. And so when I'm doing it for someone else, I have to sort of curtail things. And that's, I think, good for me sometimes to have a little uh, structure. <laughs> so. Um, what was your favorite book as a kid? My favorite book was Go Dog Go. I love this book, especially because at the very end, there's a big tree and I, I feel like I'm constantly trying to put big trees into all my books because somehow trees are very important to me and to, to all kids. And actually another one of my favorite ones was this one. And I really love the way he illustrates it's just got this looseness and just loveliness. And, you know, look, it's, this just makes you want to be there. And so he's, his work has influenced me, you know, since I was a little kid. So that's cool. I also love this book. <laughs> I mean, I could go on forever, but this was a really moving book. I don't know if people know this book, but it's beautifully illustrated, but it also, it's just, heart-wrenching. This little boy finds a little bear in the woods and brings it home and then it just gets too big to handle. But it's so it seems like it's more, it, you know, it's not only about bears, it's about things getting out of hand. <laughs> and it's kind of cool. It, it was, it definitely moved me as a child. <laughs> Any and, questions? Yeah. More questions? <laughs> What advice do you have for young artists and writers? Um, I think for me was to just constantly work. You know, even if you feel like, oh my God, I don't have the energy. Um, you know, I'm doing too much. I don't have the room. You just, you just have to keep working 
all the time. And one thing I did was I had two kids, two little kids. And I used to think, well, I need to be doing my artwork or I'll, I, you know, I won't, uh, I won't keep doing it. I'll just stop doing it. And so I decided that my third child was named Art. <laughs> so, and that if I didn't feed him and give him or her, um, you know, enough time, he would get weak and die. So, so it was sort of a thing in my head, okay, I gotta keep this alive. And so I think also, I think also when, once you start working with an editor, just be really, be easy, you know, they're hardworking people and you just have to, you know, you get them their things on time and, you know, don't, you know, if you're gonna make something a dummy for them, you know, make it easy for them to open up and read, you know, don't make anything complicated, just make, make it easy make, and be nice, <laughs> that's, that's all. Yeah. Did you know, even when you were a kindergarten teacher that you wanted to write books eventually? Yes, I think, when I think I started with wanting to illustrate because I remember reading to my kids and I would just stay on the page because I was looking so closely at the illustrator. I remember them yelling, read mama, read. Um, so I, I was really interested in doing illustration and I was constantly thinking, oh, I could probably do this or do a better job. Or, and then, um, and I think writing came because I realized, oh, I wanna see more of this kind of book out there. And so it, it, so it led to writing too, so. Really cool. So I'm working on a third Daniel book. Yes. Yes, I just signed the contract. So it's good. Can you tell us any more detail? Um, this time he's meet, meeting grandpa in the park and grandpa says, what's new Daniel? And Daniel says, I don't know, I'll go find out. And so he <laughs> runs and talks to different animals and rocks and birds and finds out what's new and then comes back to grandpa with a, a report. <laughs> and do you know when Prairie Days comes out? Prairie Days is out. Oh, it's out. But yeah, this one's out. Um, the one I'm, the second one I did for her, I just took to New York, the finals. And um, that one's called Snow Horses. And that will, that, so I just got it. And it's usually a year from when I deliver the finals about, so. We'll see. So look for that one coming your way in about a year. Yeah. <laughs> and for Daniel too, but yeah. in the far future. In the far future, I know it takes them so long. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> the whole process. And right, you know, it takes a while to do all the back and forth of the writing. It's getting easier, but the Daniel one took a while to write. You know, it was probably three or four months of back and forth with, with the editor. And then, and then illustrating takes usually about six or seven months. So. When, you're, when you're writing the story of Daniel, are you, are you thinking about the illustrations at the same time? Yes, I, I am now. Yeah, because I, I know what I like to do. Like I know, I knew, I love doing marsh scenes. So I, I put in uh, red wing blackbirds because they're the first birds in spring to go to the marsh. And, and there's so many things happening in spring and this is, book takes place in spring. And so um, I just, you know, I have, I have him asking the tadpoles what are new and they say, our legs. <laughs> so I get to do that. And I, you know, I, now I get to do tadpoles and it's really fun to just sort of do the research and figure out how they look cool as a pattern together. And so, so it's, the research is fun too. God, that's great. I, I didn't think about that. Like what do tadpoles look like when they, when they swim, you have to find out so that you can create them. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, there's so much to learn. Yeah, the frog, I remember doing the frog for, for Daniel finds a poem and 
it just took so long for me to get it right. And you know, it's just pages and pages of research and it's, it's, but it's good. I learned so much too. And when you made Korean skins of frog, is that collage like the owl? That one, I can't remember. I think it was painted. I think I painted it. So when I, sometimes when I get into things that I want to be really detailed, I will like here, like the chipmunk is painted. Just because I feel like it's very hard to get a softness, like all of his the faces I will do painting. Yeah, here's frog. So I did paint it, but I think I actually cut it out afterwards. So yeah, I eventually it's so I because what I love about collage is this these clean edges. You know, once you cut it, it's the cleanest edge you're gonna get which is hard to get with a paint, so it's like cheating. <laughs> so, so the elements that you paint, you cut those out and then put them in? Sometimes, yeah. It's whatever works. It's different every time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here you can see I cut him. I even cut out the edge of his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but then, you know, these the silhouettes here, I painted these because mm -hmm. I just wanted to get a little bit of softness. So it, it varies. I make it up each time. <laughs> but you couldn't remember all of those pieces, how you created them. I can remember, yes, <laughs> because it's solidly in there. Yeah, it's, it, I just delivered a, a, the, the finals yesterday and I know them so well. It, it was really sad to take them down here because they they fill my studio. They're just they're you know each one is a presence. And when I took them down, it felt so empty. I quickly like threw this all up so that I'd be ready for right here. It's like good. I need something on the walls because I worry about my children out there <laughs> until they get printed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing them. <laughs> good yeah it was fun it was a whole winter scene so I was doing winter paintings all spring it was kind of funny until now so it's hard to remember winter when you're in the middle of summer <laughs> back to the research yeah right yeah all right that's all of our questions good if people ever have questions you can email me too <laughs> I'm happy to answer questions Ah, oh, thank you. All right. So thanks for joining us today, everyone. We will post a recording of this program to our YouTube page in the next week or so. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more great content from the Fort Worth Public Library and turn on those notifications. If you would like to purchase a copy of the book, there are copies available at Monkey and Dog Bookshop in Fort Worth. Thank you. Thanks so much, Misha. Bye. Thanks for coming to my studio. <laughs>